Okay, welcome to our Thursday Tips from the Top call. Um, we are getting down to the nitty gritty um, end of the year, and this is our second to last call for 2017, which is amazing. This year has flown by. Um, but I'm really, really excited to have you guys join us today, and really excited for our guest presenter, Aaron Chamberlain. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Aaron. Um, so, Aaron joined Via One Hope in April of 2016. Um, she's currently a senior director, and Erin's got a team that spans both coasts and seriously everything in between. She's a wife and mommy to an adorable kindergartner. Erin just moved to Golden, Colorado in August, uh, where she was in the Seattle area for 16 years prior to that. And so she's really starting a new chapter in life and getting closer to family. Um, she and her family have been exploring the outdoors and Colorado looks really good on her and her family. I think they're enjoying it. Um, but One Hope was Erin's first experience with network marketing. And she told me she really feels like she has found her calling. Um, I definitely would agree to that sentiment for sure because I've enjoyed watching Erin uh, come on board, make a name for herself be successful very quickly and inspire a really large team underneath her to do the same. And so today, Erin is going to share with us some of her top tips for how to close out the year strong. So without further ado, I will pass it over to Erin. All right. Thanks, Katie. Um, hi, everyone. So um, I'll kind of just dive um, right into things. So yeah, we've got... Um, what, just a few weeks left le um, left in the year, but of course there's some big um, holidays coming up as well um, with that. So my first um, tip, of course, is to really put on your customer service hat and think about, um, be sure to kind of check the vine, um, be checking our stock list to know um, what our shipping deadlines are um, and to make sure that you're not, um, you know, reaching out to your customers and selling them something that we don't have in stock anymore. So it's important to kind of um, keep those things first um, and foremost um, so that you can provide the best customer service um, for, um, for your uh, clients. So um, of course, our shipping deadlines, our shipping map, they're all in via you. It's been in the Vine every week, so it's also easy to find on the front page of your home office. Um, so some ideas I have for kind of finishing out um, the rest of the year. Um, a lot of people I know have already been doing this. I've got one going on as well. It's kind of a 12 days of gifting um, event, and I've just been doing that virtually on Facebook. Um, you know, you could also do, um, you could easily do one just for a week or a few days. Um, go on, feature some of our amazing um, amazing gifts, um, you know, have people put together mix and match wine pieces for their upcoming holiday parties. Um, you could see if a neighbor is hosting a cookie swap and see if you could join in with that and do some wine pairings along uh, with the cookies. That could be fun and an easy way to just to kind of um, um, get out to your neighborhood as well. Um, another idea is um, a lot of people are doing white elephant or Yankee swap um, right now and um, I'm actually doing an event next Tuesday um, where my neighbor invited me to come and share some wine um, with with her so you know it's something where um, most people are gonna be having wine anyway at those type of events so um, yeah it'll be kind of a great that'll kind of be my, my last event um, of the year um, you could also host your own, of course, um, and right now it's a really good time to break out some of those reserves. If you pick them up at the Black Friday sale um, and kind of do a reserve uh, red tasting. Um, also, um, a bubbly tasting as well, since people are getting ready for, um, for New Year's. And so you could feature not only some of our flavored sparkling wines, but our Brut. Um, maybe even if you have a bottle of Prosecco, it could be a great way to promote Wine Club and um, some of our new um, celebration brute as well and kind of do a side-by-side -side tasting to see the difference between um, the brute and the, um, and the celebration. So you could also break out some of the new One Hope kitchen products, which if you haven't tried those, they are amazing and like really high quality and delicious. So um, I brought some of those to a, a real estate office a couple weeks ago and um, kind of thought the 
I don't know, it was sort of my first presentation at a real estate office and I wasn't quite sure how it went, but the realtor called me yesterday and placed a gift order for like 15 of those boxes. So, um, so yeah, they're, um, they're really great. And you know, pick some up for yourself too. I'm using them to break out, to give out as like hostess gifts when we go to parties or if I'm just meeting up with some friends for lunch and um, you can share some of those, some of those in there and they're going to make a great addition to people's holiday parties. Um, of course, some other ideas for sales this month. Um, we just had the mall back release, which is huge. Um, I know I have a ton of friends and customers who are big mall back fans, so I'm making sure that they know about that um, new wine that we have out. And then, um, of course, our sparkling sale, which um, is most of our sparkling wine collection and glitter bottles, with the exception of the Edna Valley red glitter bottle. And um, all the details of that, of course, are in the vine, but basically three or more, you get 20% off. So if somebody's looking to pick up a few bottles for um, New Year's, this is a great way to um, encourage them to get a few bottles before the holidays. Um, and so who to reach out to? Um, my go-to this time of year are usually my previous customers. So um, this includes people who gifted last year, um, but really, I mean, even if you don't have a big customer base yet, um, you know, showcasing out to your friends and family, um, just talking about it over social media. Like I had lunch with a friend yesterday and um, she was seeing how her husband needed some good gifting ideas. And then they just got like a really nice bottle of wine from his boss. And so um, I was telling her a little bit about One Hope and she took a catalog home with her for her husband to take a look at, right? So like maybe, you know, I said like maybe one of our, um, her 10 year anniversary Magnum would be like a great statement gift for something like that. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out and share um, wherever you are. So um, of course, like our gifts are great for people who are really hard to buy for. So, um, you know, you can take different options for that. One Hope blog actually has a lot of great ideas right now. Um, they've got blog posts on gifts for teachers, gifts for mom, gifts for the men in your life. Um, and so there's a lot of different avenues you can um, take with that. Um, anybody, of course, that you know might be having a holiday party or New Year's Eve celebration, you can do that sparkling sale, um, which is great. Um, another good one, I think I mentioned I had a real estate client um, just purchase some of the One Hope Kitchen um, sets. But um, any of your corporate clients who might have missed that um, customization deadline, um, we have amazing gifts for any kind of person, whether it's um, some of our wine gifts or non-alcoholic options and coffee. Um, a lot of um, corporate clients also do their um, like in-house holiday parties in January instead of December since it's so busy. So um, they still may be interested. Um, so it doesn't hurt to reach back out just to see if they, um, if you can help them this time of year. Um, and then of course, you know, I always just encourage like uh, my friends, customers on social media, just sort of remind people like, hey, this is always a great time of year to have wine on hand. You never know when you're gonna get invited over somewhere last minute for like a little cocktail party or um, need a hostess gift or of course, you know, to gift like your teachers, coaches, instructors. Um, there's all kinds of, um, there's always seems to be somebody last minute that you forgot. So it's always great to have some special bottles or, um, or gifts on hand, things like that. So, um, and if you're close to qualifying this month, um, or hitting a big goal. I know a lot of people are probably um, working on trying to earn that Mexico trip or maybe um, close out the year with um, to get um, a promotion bonus if you've been hitting a level for the last few months. I know I am, so. Um, <laughs> um, but one thing I always say in this case is to be your own best customer. So, um, you know, I always buy, like, I'm the wine at the gates for a cause price for my um, for my special events and for um, my gifts and um, I let's see um, I joined the wine club I definitely I would encourage everybody to um, to join the wine club and that's also a great way if you can get a couple people signed up on that before the end of the year um, to get yourself qualified so but I really encourage people to 
um, operate in this manner because you're getting the experience that your customer is getting as well. It can help you um, understand maybe if there um, somebody's having like um, with ordering or whatever, you can provide them tips or just um, help people out um, more directly with their order. But I was like kind of getting, um, experiencing what the customer is experiencing for myself. But So of course you could try, um, there's the wine club, you can pick up some of the new Malbec. Um, you could pick up some of uh, the new um, Method Champenois, um, sparkling wine. Um, so there's a lot of things, of course, and then the One Hope Kitchen. So, um, and I know, okay, so our shipping deadlines are um, coming up. Next week is kind of the deadline for um, early next week, too, for Christmas gifts. And then um, I think very shortly thereafter for New Year's, um, which means the last couple months of the year are not always super busy. Um, they haven't been for me historically, but I know a couple of people on my team are doing some events um, the week between Christmas and New Year's, which is great. So um, that's like a good opportunity, even if you are traveling. I know somebody who's having, um, a girl on my team's having a party with her sister, and she has a couple potential recruits out of that too. So that's, um, that's exciting. So I like to see, um, it's a great way to like to finish out the year strong and, um, and kind of utilize your holiday time with your family in a different, um, in a different place too. And a good way to entertain. <laughs> um, but something that I usually do the last couple weeks of the year as well is, take some time to start looking um, into January. So um, probably starting late next week, I will reach out to my January house and see if we can get um, a date on the calendar with them. Um, I also use the time to, um, to get some extra coaching done with people on my team, especially um, some people who are new and um, need some of the extra time, to, um, some of my time. Um, and then I think... Of course, what's really nice this time of year is to sit back and reflect on um, the impact you've made for your community. And um, that's really what One Hope is all about and what we embody. And um, it's a great time, you know, if you want to reach out and some people reach out to their customers at the end of the year to showcase um, the value of the donations that they made um, through private wine tasting events or the impact that they made through each of the bottles sold. So that can be something really nice um, to share with your customers. Um, and then I think last um, is just to take some time to celebrate at the end of the year. So, you know, break out at one of these and celebrate, you know, celebrate your successes this year. So, you know, you've made an income, you've made an impact in your community. Maybe you earned that via vacation. Um, um, and so, um, I think that, yeah, it's really important to take some time for yourself at the end of the year, too, and recoup and replenish yourself and come back refreshed um, to rock 2018, because I know that One Hope has some amazing things planned for us. So, yeah, so I think that's all I have. Does anybody um, have any questions? I didn't just like blow through that like super fast. Sorry. <laughs> no, Erin, that was awesome. Um, and, and I love how you finished it up there um, by saying it, how important it really is important to take time for yourself and to recognize and celebrate what you have accomplished this year. Um, you know, we've got some exciting things that are going to be announced tomorrow in the community kudos email that we send out at the first of every month. We've seen some really big promotions, which is exciting. And we've also had people that have set goals for themselves that they haven't quite reached. And so don't be discouraged by that. Um, you should be very proud, all of you, of what you and your teams have accomplished this year. Um, because... Um, you know, not everyone is going to promote in the same month at the same time at the same level. So even if your goal was only to come on board and sell $500 a month and you did it, pat yourself on the back and celebrate that and be happy about that because you've achieved your goal. Um, so I think it's really important not to compare your goals to those of others is just one big thing that I want to say. And then secondly, it is important to take the time to step back and recognize and acknowledge it um, because I think burnout comes when you don't take the time to celebrate the wins and the successes 
And um, a lot of us, especially as women, it's kind of hard sometimes to take a compliment or to, um, you know, kind of sing your own praises. But it's really important psychologically for you as a business person, as an entrepreneur, to recognize those accomplishments that you're making along the way um, so that you don't burn yourself out um, and you are feeling inspired and motivated every morning to get up and keep pushing for your goals. So um, if you don't mind, I'll just re recap real quick. I was jotting down some notes while you were talking, Erin. So I'll just kind of recap yeah. what I heard Erin um, say. And then if anybody's got any questions, that would be great. So Erin's um, first tip was definitely uh, put on your customer service hat, which is super important. I just read an article in my local newspaper um, about UPS having their busiest day ever, um, Cyber Monday and their whole system went completely out of whack. And so we've seen that affect some of our shipments and some of our orders because UPS was overwhelmed and there was a bubble that they talked about in this article I read in their system that like the bubble finally burst. And unfortunately, some of us were victim to that um, and some of your customers were. So it's super important now, especially, but always, really to have your customer service hat on um, and do everything that you can um, from your end to make sure that there's a good, smooth experience. There are things that are out of our control and out of our hands, like wine selling out really quickly or UPS, you know, the bubble bursting with them. Um, but as long as you are not kind of, you know, hiding under the covers and you're proactively being there for your customers, even if they are affected by an annoyance like that, they're going to remember how you made them feel if you go above and beyond in terms of customer service. So don't be afraid to reach out, especially if you do see something um, crazy going on with tracking information or something like that. Um, customers going to appreciate you having their back and reaching out. So I love that tip because that was a really great one. Um, Aaron um, talked about 12 days of gifting featuring um, some of the amazing gifts that we have. It's easy to do if you follow One Hope on social media. Uh, we are doing 12 days of gifting. Um, just share what we're doing. Um, you know, recreate that and make your own post with a link to your personal website so you don't have to waste a bunch of time deciding what gift you want to feature, looking for the pictures, what do you say about it. Um, you know, grab stuff off of our social media um, with the 12 days of gifting and share that as well. I love, Erin, you talked about number three, joining other parties that are taking place, like if your neighbor's having a cookie exchange or something like that. Don't get caught up on, oh my gosh, my neighbor told me that, you know, two nights from now she's having a cookie exchange and she said I could bring wine, but we haven't ordered a host package. We haven't invited anybody. Um, that's why it's always important for you to have wine on hand for those last minute opportunities that, you know, it doesn't have to be a full on tasting event like you would normally do. Take a couple bottles of wine that you've got in your personal um, stash and use that as an opportunity. Don't ever leave the house without your business cards, some catalogs. Some host planners, opportunity brochures, you know, keep them in the trunk of your car, um, in your purse, book bag, whatever you're carrying around with you. Never be caught off guard without having some of that stuff to share, including a few bottles of wine uh, to take for those opportunities. Because, you know, you don't want to hijack somebody else's party, per se, uh, but you can still talk about what you do, talk about the impact that we make, enjoy some wine with people, um, get their information, and then follow up with them. Um, you know, the next day to try to maybe book an event or see if they need some gifts or if they want to order some sparkling wine for New Year's. Um, so I love that. Erin, um, I also love she shared host your own tasting event. So as you guys know, you can be your own host as many times throughout the year as you like. Um, I would additionally throw out the idea because January could be a little bit of a slow month. Host your own VIP wine tasting in January and invite all of those people your, that hosted events for you in 2017 as sort of a thank you. And introduce some of the, you know, definitely the new Malbec, um, any of our other new releases, some of our reserves. But really treat your hosts um, to a nice event that you're hosting for them. And you could invite your, your previous hosts and like your top purchasers, so maybe figure out who um, your top 10 customers were from this year, um, even though they didn't host a tasting event, invite them as well so that they can experience some of the new varietals that we have. And it's a great opportunity uh, for you to also rebook them for a tasting event maybe in January themselves or in March. So do a VIP tasting. Um, Aaron shared the idea of doing um, like a reserves or a bubbly tasting, um, which I saw Carolyn McGraw, I think, did a really fun tasting and had beautiful pictures of doing a, a bubbly sparkling event. Kitchen products, that's another great suggestion that Aaron had. Um, it's, it's newer for us. Um, and so that's a really fun thing too. Not a bad idea to have a few of those items on hand if you do get invited to 
um, a potluck or something like that, you can bring some of our, our beautiful kitchen products. Malbec, hello. Who's Raise your hand if you've ordered Malbec for yourselves. I haven't ordered mine yet. I need to before you guys buy it all. <laughs> uh, yeah. a new yeah. so, even if you had customers that purchased from you during the Black Friday sale, which was, you know, two weeks ago, um, reach out and let them know that we've got Malbec because people are still happy. They're in a buying mood and you've got a new varietal that they weren't able to purchase because it wasn't available. Um, you'd probably be surprised. A lot of them would say, yeah, I'll take a half case of wine, even though I just bought some a couple weeks ago and throw in some of those Malbec. Um, and have a couple extra sparkling bottles maybe for, for New Year's. Um, and so then Aaron kind of wrapped up too, which is talking about who to reach out to and, and um, who to offer the opportunity um, to purchase gifts and kitchen sets. And, you know, definitely, hopefully you guys are all giving uh, people in your lives One Hope Christmas gifts as well um, to help kind of spread the word about your business and also delight somebody with a really amazing product. Uh, that makes an impact. So those were the notes that I jotted down from Aaron. I think you had some really great tips for us. And um, let's definitely open it up and see if anybody else has any tips or questions that they would like to ask. And you can type in the chat box um, or you can unmute yourself and talk to us live as well if you'd like. Hi hey guys, it's your newbie Vicki here. I don't know how to bring the chat up on my iPad. <laughs> I got all this technology. You young people can help me. So I have my launch on Saturday and I have three people whose birthdays it is in my neighborhood and I'm giving them each a bottle of One Hope. And I felt funny with the first gal putting on a business card. Do you recommend when you do a gift to somebody to also attach the business card or not? Um, it certainly doesn't hurt. I mean, I would write them just like a customized gift note and, um, you know, wishing them a happy birthday and maybe um, just sort of reiterating the impact that that bottle makes that you are, you are gifting them and why you thought that they would enjoy it. So. Okay. I just wondered if it would look tacky if I did my, my business card. I thought I could put it in with the little birthday card. <laughs> but that's a great idea to point out, even though the bottle says, who says they'll read the bottle. Okay, thanks. Yeah, or if you don't want to put your business card in, you could always do it as, um, you know, give the gift and, um, you know, and yeah, you could share a little bit about, I would definitely share about like the impact and, um, you know, whether you're giving it personally or whatever and let them know that that information's on the bottle, but then kind of follow up with them in a couple of weeks or early January and ask them how they enjoyed the gift. And then at that point, that might open up another conversation for you um, to talk about, you know, that you are doing private wine tasting parties and the give back you can do through that. Perfect. I think a great okay. suggestion, Erin. I think too, if you just, you know, hand wrote the card of, you know, um, how happy you are to celebrate, you know, your friend that it's their birthday and that you're happy to give a really special <laughs> gift to them this year that means a lot to you um, and that you're excited to talk to them more about that later, um, but really make the focus on, you know, the, the gift itself and that the natural opportunity will be there very quickly for you to follow up. Perfect. And then last question. Um, Saturday is my event and several of the people can't come because they're doing a fundraiser for the rescue that happens to be my 10% beneficiary. So I don't have a gift basket. I do have a bottles of wine, but I don't know if I'm going to leave wine with them because I'm not going to get the event. I'm going to leave my material to tell them how they'll benefit purchase. Is there anything I can leave that's one hope besides brochures? I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to have to leave a bottle of wine just for a visual. You could leave, um, like, you know, you could put out, like, if you have a glitter bottle, for instance, like, that's kind of a fun, eye-catching visual. Um, something you could do, like, um, that's okay. Um, you could make up, like, a little flyer, though. I know um, there's been, um, people have shared things like that in VIA, or in the VIA community page on Facebook. Um, you could just make up, like, a little flyer about um, the give back. Um, that would happen and you could share the unique link to that party since it's benefiting um, that animal shelter and um, so I know I think right I have, Cox I have is two party codes for form. them yeah okay then I think I'll just leave one of the less expensive bottles of wine between the two picture frames with the info 
I would and say somebody hijacked it. I would say print off some of the lead forms as well um, and print those out and maybe, you know, make a little sign and encourage people to fill out and leave their information so that you can follow, you know, who was there and you can follow up with them. Um, because otherwise um, it's going to be hard for you to track down. Um, you know, it's not as though you're going to go back and collect a stack of order forms that people have decided what they want to order. Um, so, but they would be um, inclined probably to leave their contact information if they're interested in more information. Um, so definitely I would say leave some lead forms and encourage people to, to fill it out. Okay, and I think I do have the Pinot that benefits the animal cause. So I'll, I'll leave that one along with all the other materials. Thank you for all the tips. Good luck on your event. That's exciting. Yeah. All right, well, I live in Southern California and I have a lot of cancellations because so many people are impacted by the fires. It's, it'll be interesting, but my upline's been really, really positive. And she goes, well, if you have a zero, a no show, that's okay. You rebook again when things aren't so awful for people. I'm just like, good as my launch. <laughs> That's exactly right. You just go with the flow. So, um, and people are going to need help too once uh, the fire subsides. Um, so people will be looking for ways to give back and make an impact um, as well. So as long as you maintain, um, you know, remember that um, the relationships that you're developing with these customers and hosts and, um, you know, purchasers is the most important thing. Um, if it doesn't happen now because of circumstances that are beyond people's control, um, they will rebook. They will come back to you as long as um, you left them, you know, feeling um, happy and supported and um, cared about and encouraged. They'll come back when the time's right. Perfect. Thank you. You bet. Any other questions, you guys, for Aaron? No. Okay, well, Erin, thank you so much for being our special guest presenter today. Always love to see your face. You had some really, really great suggestions and tips um, that hopefully will be helpful for you guys and for your teams as we close out the month of December. Um, so have a fantastic weekend, you guys, armed with these amazing tips from Erin. Um, you should be set to go close an amazing December. See you guys soon. Thanks. Bye, thanks. <laughs>